We have a very important mission for tonight. We must use stealth and cunning to infiltrate the human world and retrieve Gogurt. Gogurt. Okay, Batman. Da, 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 da. You sound insane. You realize that? Oh, yeah. The whole world got crazy. Seriously? It's showtime. That's fun. It's the return of one of the most beloved parts of pop culture from our childhood. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. The first Turtles movie since, I don't know when, because they've been all real bad lately. So, it's been a minute. Um, I've kind of blocked out. I don't know about you guys, I've kind of blocked out. That we did, in fact, do multiple episodes on... The teenage, the previous Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, not not the one from 1990. I'm talking the ones that came out in like 2017, maybe. Oh uh, yeah, like where like Will Arnett is. You know, <laughs> yeah. right? Last last well, one we Brad talked Garrett about, Brian, was like Out of the Crane? Shadows in 2016, yeah. which I actually Jeez, I actually kind of liked. Yeah. I went looking. I remember, I have no memory of any of these. Really, I'll be honest with you. I went looking in our. Uh, our official sheet that that we keep um, that I that keeps track of all the episodes we've done because I'm like I was like surely we've done a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode in the oh past, we've done like, like ninety you know four or five maybe one. we've done a lot yeah. yeah and I so I just searched I just searched yeah I searched in the sheet Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and it came up with several several <laughs> entries like oh okay I don't remember this I don't remember this really at all <laughs> well I um, do it's 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 been quite a while um, so. This is going to be a fun one. I'm excited to talk to you guys about this. Kent saw this, I think, before anyone else in the entire world. And uh, so it's it's going to be... I think this will be fun. I think this will be a good one. We needed a guest to properly nerd out on this thing. Um, so we're welcoming back. For the first time since since he became a married man. Absolutely. How's it going, buddy? What I'm ready. No, nothing to celebrate you. the maturity of being married than talking <laughs> about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. You know? It's just, yeah. 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 Nothing to celebrate yeah, for her. Yeah, yeah. Lots to celebrate for you, but uh, yeah, um, no, just. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She made an honest man out of you. That's right. Yeah. I, I went in, in my Stephen Amell, Casey Jones cosplay from Out of the Shadows. Didn't, didn't age well, to be honest. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Fun, fun bad fact. Time you know, what, what's like the for... opposite of like the McConaissance? You know, like, like the moment where you realize an actor you thought uh-huh. could be good is actually really terrible. Like that uh-huh. was like. That was the, mm-hmm. the thing for Stephen mm-hmm. Amell. I was like, oh, it's, I, I liked Arrow. It's fine. You know, this yeah. guy could be something. To... No. <laughs> yeah. No, it was terrible. Sure. sure. No, it's it's okay. It's all right. We all have our L's. Um, so, you know, I think half the people that I made American Treasures back when we used to do yeah, that sure. yeah. were later canceled. So um, I don't have a great track record with this sort of thing. And I'd like to preemptively apologize to Ryan Gosling for loving him so much because I'm sure this will only lead to bad things for him uh, eventually. Uh, Ariel, apologize to whatever <laughs> he does to someone. Yeah, yeah. That's your spot. You know, they're the victim. That's wow, Brian, your track record. Siding with the abusers already. <laughs> really, you're me. the problem. I'll be better. Um, <laughs> You'll be better. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, Ariel, I'm going to go to you first uh, because I talk to Kent and Richard all the time, and I'm really I get tired it. of it. Um, as we near you are. a thousand oh, episodes I- here, we're close. We're close. This is around 9:50. Just. For what it's Grief. worth, guys, we're real close to a thousand episodes. Um, pretty crazy. Got to get a plan in order. Yeah, that's right. We got to get gotta get cracking on this for the suicide pact. Um, give me your background on. You texted me a couple months ago. I was like, hey, if you don't have a guest for uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I'd like. That's not true. I you were demand. like, I demand to be did, on yeah. Ninja Turtles. Actually, you were pretty pretty adamant about it and sent a lot of threatening letters. So, but you got your way. So that's the important part. Um, what's your background with the turtles and? What was it about this that uh, made you want to be on the episode so much? I know. Well, I, I did. Need, while, I did so. need to to uh, you know book some work. Otherwise, my benefits lapse, and you guys don't want us forming a union. So, <laughs> uh, um, mm-hmm. I am uh, about as big a fan of the Ninja Turtles as you can get without becoming an awkward YouTube documentary about the guy who spends ten thousand dollars a year on merchandise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Brian knows. Yeah, he's guy. in our Discord, yeah. I think. I Shout out to Matt, right? Yeah. Um, really Matt. Now, yeah. there's, you know, I just, I don't love anything that yeah. much, but I am like a huge fan. I was born in um, 1990, about 30 years after Brian was. 
And so I grew up yeah. loving the uh, initially loving the those '90s movies, um, the live action ones. I still to this day yeah. will like fight for that first one being like an actual good movie, and not just like like the other two or whatever. Right? They're silly Star Wars esque merchandising films, but the first one I think actually is pretty good. I Shots mean, fired well, Star Wars. you know, I love the original Star Wars, but let's be clear: the, the prequels were not exactly. Um, you know, high art. So, and we all know, you know, Tell the, the Senate. you know, I, I might get that. That's not how it happened from, from George over there, but we all know that they, they made those <laughs> part of, part of those movies is making a ton of money on merchandise. Uh, yeah. I, I love the Ninja Turtles. I'm a big Raphael fan. I have a pet tortoise named Raphael. Nice. I, I did grow up when I was like, I think a preteen like with one of the cartoons that came out in, in like, Oh, two, maybe. Or 04, whatever that iteration is. But I, I don't know. I've kind of just persisted with my fandom of them throughout the years. Uh, like, I'll rewatch the movies. That 07 movie was was pretty fun. Um, I've, like, read uh, the comic run, which is really interesting. But, um, but yeah, you know, as, as an adult, what I actually find the most interesting part and, and kind of why I love the Turtles is, is there's this cracked uh, video way back in the day of, like... They're like, hey, what was your favorite Transformer? And it's it's Optimus Prime. And what was your favorite G.I. Joe? And it's Snake Eyes. And who's your favorite Power Ranger? Oh, it's the red one. Sure. Yeah. And then, hey, who's your favorite mm-hmm. Ninja Turtle? And then suddenly everybody has a different answer, right? It's because sure. like yeah. they're based off of these four personality like archetypes, right. which are the same personality archetypes that like the Hogwarts houses are based off of. And so, like, I love kind of like mm-hmm. getting to know people who like the Ninja Turtles, who their favorite ones are, the group dynamics that are so much more interesting than like, you know, like the Power Rangers or the Transformers. You you know exactly who the four turtles are. You know exactly how they should act in any kind of scenario that they're put in. Um, and so when when somebody puts the time in to make a good movie, I feel like the character work is usually really good. But I I love the turtles. I um, spoiler alert, I love this movie. It was excellent. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like my my whole background. Also, you know, I was I was an Asian American nice. kid living in Jersey, across the river from like across the bay from Staten Island. So like, like this mm. like though they represented like me growing up, mm. right? So like sure. that that okay. was you yeah. know me and totally. my my friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna I want to get into the the personalities thing here in a minute um, because it has been so long since we jo- we've talked turtles and. I don't remember any of it. Uh, real fast, Richard, background with with the turtles. Before we get into general yeah, thoughts here, turtles were. Uh, I was definitely were my entire personality from okay. like four to five. Yeah. Turtles and baseball. I was a massive <laughs> turtles fan. It was the only really piece of kid stuff I ever engaged with, um, and then just went and pure then the sports stuff and stuff too. after that. Yeah, I see you at the meetings. Yeah, 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 real. Yeah, yeah. No, I got heavy into uh, all that, you know, all all um, news sites and stuff. I was ahead of the game in 1994. Um, no, but yeah. So it was it was a huge thing, and then I like one day put it down, and it's something that I'm nostalgic for in terms of um, I was like almost too young for it for it to like really stick in terms of the content. Mm. Like I, I'm nostalgic for like the look and feel okay. of it, but I remember sure. almost nothing, if that yeah, makes sense. Totally. And I'm like you, Brian, I've, I've seen things go, go in and out mm-hmm. um, the movies and stuff, but they're in one ear out the other kind of things. I did doesn't, nothing is really, there was the one, what, like Oh six, Oh seven. Yeah. 07. Yeah. yeah. I think Oh seven. Wouldn't saw that. Yeah. I wouldn't saw that one. And was like, like, T-M-N-T, oh, yeah, man, that this one stuff was called like 20, Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and we, but was excited for this one because of um, you know the the Goldberg and, and Rogan seem like the right type of writers for this, um, and and uh, it seemed yeah it seemed too cool and and a new take. I I liked that there wasn't really a big like celebrity cast on the voices. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a great. They should sound young. Really leaned into um, at least for the, those four. And then, and then some other pieces later on. So, yeah, it it, it was definitely something I'm interested in. I, I I'm always like a fan of the turtles, but it's not. I don't like revisit it or like, mm. you know, sure. 
think about it a lot, but I always like root for it because I loved it when I was four. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Kent, real fast, your uh, your background with the turtles too. Yeah, this franchise is probably the first thing that was ever really mine that I liked. Uh, you know, okay. I think the first. Sure. Property I liked was Muppets, but that was because it was force fed to me by my parents when I was one and two. And then I was like, no, I want to like my own things. I think Turtles was probably the first thing that I actually liked and sure. one of the shirts, one of the action figures. And then it was kind of Batman around that time with the with the eighty nine Batman and uh and then mm-hmm. once I discovered Star Wars, I mean my my youth was sure. Star Wars from then on. <laughs> but uh yeah, mm-hmm. man. Always Liked the turtles, and it's dead on to what Ariel was talking about. It's the, the personalities and how they play off each other, and how there's four of them instead of two of them or three of them. It just adds such a different element than what you see with most cartoons. You always relate to a different turtle at a different time. I, I'm always a Leo guy. I, yeah, at different times, I'm like, man, I really like Donatello in this one, or Mikey was my favorite one in this one. And so, depending on my mood, I'm Raph, you know? <laughs> and so that always right. has appealed to me. I've always liked the characters, but I've never felt like they've reached their full potential on screen, on TV. Mm. You know, I think a lot of the people that had you know attachment to it as a youth probably feel that way too like they'll go back and watch a few episodes and be like oh this was this is really only good to like very small children and so i think they're still trying to play to the people that grew up on it and also bring in new fans this is a great way to do that but sure. i think this is totally a step in the right direction because the last one I mean, the michael bay influence and megan fox in the lead like they're really just trying to bro this thing out and roid it up and mm-hmm trying to get this thing to the college age crowd and I don't think that's necessarily the right move in terms of tone for these. Yeah. And Agreed. this yeah. one I mean felt like a total refresh reboot, totally new franchise and yeah. all the better for it. Not to get spoilery or anything, uh, but those are general yeah. thoughts. I'll add to that and then I'll very quickly give my kind of back because I'm one I'm thing to that to you though, this Brian, is, is that the fact that this franchise is able to be rebooted because mm-hmm. there is no definitive version, really. Even though the, the, the right. cartoon yeah. version is, or the, the 1990 movie version is kind of definitive, mm-hmm. I feel like people are still right. wanting a Nolan dark Knight version of the or you know like mm-hmm. oh this is finally sure. what it has the well, potential to be and so that's why it lends itself to like every single three every three years they can reboot it and everyone's just like okay cool yeah because we still haven't seen the best of what this could be and it, and, and i think part of that too is that it's not it's not so serious right. i the, i the, the canon isn't serious i yeah. love right i mean we've talked i mean many times over the years about and and Ariel and I have had this conversation offline a lot too of <laughs> how bad fandom is just in general. <laughs> um, it's and and how toxic it, it gets and how quickly it gets there. Um, there are I'm sure very toxic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fanboys um, because that's just the world that we live in. You can find toxicity revolving around I think literally anything at this point, but. But it isn't as um, it doesn't seem like as mainstream and broad based, and maybe because this is as as great as big of a fan base as this this French or uh, this property has. It's a smaller piece of the pie than Star Wars or Marvel or DC or whatever. Um, but it's generally, I feel like, uh, it's a pretty <laughs> unserious property that can kind of like just enjoy you can enjoy it if you like this stuff you can not enjoy it if you don't and if we do it right we can bring in some new people or we can re we can bring some people back in who bailed out in the the michael bay era of this whole thing um one thing that i do really and that this movie gets right it sort of course corrects i I may have said this on on the show before and part of this i think is probably having a 10 year old I love The Dark Knight. I love Batman 89. Um, I love a, a lot of these uh, Marvel movies over the years. You know, I do worry that these things that are inherently 
for children as the children grow up and become sort of in charge of this industry i i we we lean more and more towards making those movies and tv shows for those people and not for kids and then ultimately you end up losing new audiences entirely i mean i i my kid does not give one rip about superman because he's never really seen a superman property and i am i mean i let him watch all kinds of movies i'm sure that like if he was like, hey, I want to watch Man of Steel, like, okay, cool, no, you know, whatever. It's not that I'm worried about the content, but I don't know that he's going to gravitate towards it. And there's never been anything that has pulled him in. And honestly, Batman's the same way too. It's it's so, and and I think that those last Turtles movies were geared so much more towards, and and misguidedly, by the way, um, geared towards um, older, if not twenties and thirties. And not to kids, and uh, I think this is a great a great opportunity to branch that out. It's you know that rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Tur- Ninja Turtles that was on Nickelodeon, I think was relatively successful. And then they had a there was another Rise movie on Netflix last year that I haven't watched. I don't know if either any of you guys have seen, but Coop watched it recently and was kind of into it. This was a really great opportunity, I think, is my whole point to um, to get back to where it's accessible to kids and we can start to try to bring in a new audience to this whole thing. That seems like that was part of the plan for Rogan, um, and Jeff Rowe and, and Goldberg. Um, and I think that they were very successful on that. And as a result, this turns into something that was really enjoyable for me too. Like I, I star Wars was my first love. Ninja turtles was my second love. And I cared so much about the turtles until X-Men came out, Mm. you know, in whatever 92, um, it really was Star Wars, Ninja Turtles, then X Men um, in my first like ten years, and the nineteen ninety movie. Uh, again, I've probably said this before. That's like a Mount Rushmore childhood theater experience for me. I vividly remember going to see that, um, and and just feeling like you know this this thing that I love so much is now finally on on the big screen and stuff was uh, was a really cool experience. So to be able to go back to it with. Uh, with my kid who now is interested on his own. It's not me being like, hey, come in here and watch this movie from 30 years ago. You know, It's something that he wants to see. The trailers for this were great. The advertising was great. The animation is really cool. This was a really smart decision. And it's, it. I'm not too bummed out by the box office. It's doing fine. Um, I wish that it was doing better because I think that this is a really strong... Pl- I, I think that there's a lot of stuff here that... Um, was done right, and uh, I would love love for it to have paid off in a you know seventy five million dollar opening weekend or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what are you going to do? Greta's a, a machine at this point, so um, Meg's going to Meg. <laughs> it's right, yeah, the, the Meg. Who knew? Um, Ninja yeah, Turtles has actually Barbie. pulled ahead it's, of the uh, Meg, and uh, after the weekend, it looks like okay. the yeah, Meg stands good. had their weekend and they're gone okay. now. You know. I mean, look, it's exactly. doing it's doing well. It's made it's at like fifty five million dollars worldwide. It's only a seventy million dollar budget. And wow, so, seventy million. You know, this this looks great. incredible this is going to for, be, for that. Yeah, absolutely, because they took their time. This this was a movie that took several years to make, and they, I think, at least as that the, you know, who knows? We can always get milkshake duck later. But like, they tried hard to not overwork the the visual artists and wow shocking concept you know that that is and um they took their time with it and and i think they're gonna it's gonna result in a in a moderate hit if not a huge blockbuster hit and it should relaunch i think it should relaunch this this franchise um ariel you said you loved it so that's sort of general thoughts in general i get already but give me a little more on on what you liked about this thing and and we'll 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 go ahead and we'll, we'll drop the spoiler alert here and just we, we'll can talk this movie out a little bit. So what, what'd you like about this that uh, appealed to you as a, as a long time Ninja Turtles? Um, I think this is the first iteration to that. I've seen, I haven't seen rise of the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is really the first iteration that I've watched where they like, they really feel like kids, right? They really feel 15 years old that, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's, it is, I think if I was 15, or 12 or whatever i think i'd be obsessed with how these like these kids act besides the fact like i i think they got the personalities 
like perfectly uh too many iterations of the turtles i think leo and raf are kind of like the same person which is why they fight all the time this one they're completely not right but i think mm-hmm. ken i think ken said it what makes this like special is it's it's just gorgeously animated it is it is perfect mm-hmm. it feels like almost like what ang lee tried to do with the hulk remember that mm-hmm. that weird like panel mm-hmm. transition where he's like i want to make a comic yeah. book but it, like i wanted to, to make it look like a comic mm-hmm. book, which ended up looking ridiculous because it's live action but anyway like it really looked like hand brushed art <clears throat> um sure it really felt like new york and as somebody who goes there all the time and and lives very close by and is a big part of that culture is like not always most things don't get that i I think a lot of the mcu properties with like miss marvel and luke cage luke cage is horrendous at at portraying harlem uh miss marvel is set in jersey city it's a great point it's a great point the new yorkness of this yeah um Mm. like Spider the Spider Man Sam Raimi movies kind of do it uh, almost a caricature like which this this movie was also but it's a cartoon so it, it fits a lot better but yeah like a lot of things don't they're just set in New York because they like the idea of it where this really did feel um, in New York the way the kids talked right my I grew up I grew up in Jersey City and in this town called Bayonne also. Uh, which is, of course, right across the river from both New York City and Staten Island. So the language, the vernacular, the types of jokes they tell, the bacon, egg, and cheese, like all that stuff is just so authentic, even though it does sound like a caricature. Like that, no, like people talk like that. That's real. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, you know, uh, Jackie Chan is in this, which I pegged his voice right away. Um, Not a great time to have Ice Cube in your film, perhaps. But, uh, <laughs> you know, Stephen Amell, Ice Cube, we're not having great uh, hitting percentage there with the, the Turtles cast. But no, I, I, I thought it was I thought it was great. I think it very clearly was like a kid's movie. I, I, I have heard like rumors that that this movie is more well received among young adults than it is children. I'm not super sure of that. I don't have kids at this moment, so mm. I don't know. But but yeah, I just I just think it was so fun so funny uh and, and and really authentic both to like to to everything that makes the turtles what they are except perhaps the, mm-hmm. the ninja aspect but i don't, I don't want to get into that i it's thought fun. it was smart not to Richard, lead into the uh, ninja yeah. aspect. oh i agree i agree you know it, it, they they really yeah. tried especially in the bay ones like oh we need to make this the samurai and all this needs to be the core of what we're doing no they 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 really don't even mm-hmm. I don't even play that up at all. I mean, explain it. They were rejected from society and they had to defend themselves. It's not like a, I don't know, there's no real lore to it at all. It's like, no, we live in the sewer, so mm. we have to know how to fight. That's really it. I loved that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fun, um, it was a fun way to do the, to redo the origin story. Um, I, I I enjoyed that. I thought that was a it was a sort of like a necessity kind of thing, and it was funny. It was a funny necessity, too. Um, which I thought was a a good a good change from. I don't I don't remember the origin story from most of the. I mean, I do for the from the ninety movie. I don't really remember. There's different. I mean, there's different origins. There's like there's part. one that yeah. Splinter yeah. was like an actual samurai yeah. that got transferred into a rat there's one where he's a rat that was in a samurai okay. faci- I, think, I think that's a 91 where he was a rat in the dojo, yeah. the dojo. Yeah. and he taught himself karate by uh, watching yeah. the yeah. the right. dojo right, right. So. yeah I thought this was a funny uh, adaptation of that or change of that of like having him <laughs> order the the VHS's and that's stuff so like good. that that was a good bit I thought so I enjoyed that quite a bit um Richard, what do you like about this thing? What 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 makes this a, uh, a a maybe a return to form or maybe better? I don't know. Where are you at with with this and what what makes it good for you? Yeah, you know, I come in with my own biases because we talked about this on the show before, but I don't really like animation, mm-hmm. especially the older I get. Like I hate it more and more. I just I don't know why. I'm just uncomfortable watching it. Just it's one of those things that sets in. Like love handles. Um. <laughs> So, 
I come into these like already at like a negative two, but this one's so good. It got up me up to like an eight, you know, mm-hmm. on it. Um, because it's, it's, I, I did think, have the thought, I do have a kid, but he's not in movie watching time yet. And so I did have the thought a few times of like, I don't know if would an eight year old love this. I don't know. It's kind of, um, thinky and you know, it's, it definitely is plain to us. It's, I felt very much like the audience for it, maybe a little old for it, but it kind of felt like it was plain to young adults. So yeah, I mean, but it was, it was, uh, as animated Ninja Turtle movies go about as good as I think you can do, which is, for me, which is, you know, uh, great. And and I agree. I think it's done well at the box office. You're right. I, th- I wish it had been rewarded. It's not like it's really an original. So, it, you know, those are the ones I really want to do well. But it at least took IP in an interesting way and was made thoughtfully. Uh, and not just, to, you know, to Ariel's point, sl- slang them plastic toys, though this will. Mm-hmm. And, uh all that yeah so i wish it had been a massive you know barbie-ish hit for for those folks but you know we only have so much capacity for movies these days and so i think i think uh that's that but yeah i wish this might have been better to come yeah. out maybe it's pre-barbie maybe, Heimer, but i, don't know. Sure. Um, I think Fred, there's hindsight 2020 people see a trailer for this or there's like they're doing ninja turtles again and there's just reboot yeah, sequel sure. fatigue yeah with this because of the failed Absolutely. Michael Bay project. Yeah. Even if this is the most definitive yeah. thing ever, the failures of the past have hurt this one, uh, unfortunately. Or it's not like Spider-Man yeah, where for sure. when Into the Spider-Verse came out, pretty much the last Spider-Mans we'd seen was the Tom Holland one. So everyone was super hyped on Spider-Man and then went into that one. It's like, oh, this makes it even better. So now this is setting the bar high, <laughs> you know, whereas mm-hmm. the Michael Bay one's really... Yeah pulled this franchise back years you know the 2007 one yeah Mm -hmm. was well received even though it wasn't a huge hit and then to go live action with it and to do it that way with those character designs oh i'll never monstrous folks like honestly just the most roided out (laughs) like like, they would be be super inefficient (laughs) at karate because they're so muscular like you can't even move (laughs) it didn't make sense and so to step back into animation, I think, is a genius move, and you can do so much sure. with this. When it dawned on me why it looks like paint, because the turtles are named after painters, it's like, that's the most that's the mm-hmm. most obvious, easy thing to do, but it went so far in this, and the way they pushed it, in a similar sense like they do with Spider-Verse and with Lego Movie, of using the medium itself as part of the you know, scene design... Like the motion blur of the camera, when the camera would whip, it would look like smeared paint. And mm-hmm. sometimes when a light would shine, it would have like blotches of paint mm-hmm. that you could see with the eye. I mean, I loved that yeah. that stylistic choice. And that's probably why they were able to make this super cheap because they figured out mm. pretty early on probably a look that they liked. And they're like, okay, can we do this for cheap? And it looks like 2D, honestly. Uh, it might not even be 3D animations, but sure. I don't know. It's just, I thought the the whole concept was out there in terms of what we're used to with Turtles. I mean, these Baxter Stockman looks insane. Superfly looks crazy. I mean, these are like very mm-hmm. stylized characters, but I think the Turtles themselves right. aren't, which is a smart choice. I agree. kind of go back I to agree. the original and then to have the stylistic choice of the paint on top of it to make this a really vibrant animated experience and not just like a typical CG movie or a typical 2D mm-hmm. movie mm-hmm. Uh, was, I mean, the icing on the cake. Not to mention, like, this was such a fun script. Yeah. I mean, it was, some people said the references were overblown, but I think kids talking references, it's talking about Drake and all that stuff now, so I didn't find that super cringy. I thought it that was natural. for the kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it felt natural to the kids' yeah. age at that time, especially kids that have probably only lived through the internet and VHS tapes or whatever in their sewer, right? So they don't have much of a frame mm-hmm. of reference for <laughs> how people should act in society. I thought that was fantastic. You know, April O'Neil, her story of like, okay, the only thing I'm required with April O'Neil is like she needs to be a journalist. That's all I care about. Just make her a journalist sure. in some way because that's – to me, all I remembered and cared about the character was that she was a reporter. And so I thought the uh, 
love interest slash reporter thing was interesting. And it was Leo this time around. Normally, Mikey's the one that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, starstruck mm-hmm. by women or, you know, maybe I think Donnie in, mm-hmm. in one of the last most recent ones was. And so to make Leo the leader, but also it's like these kids are just trying to figure out how to fit in with friends. It's kind of like the Richie Rich thing of, sure. uh, oh, they'll never, these normal society will never understand me because I'm different. And same with the movie they're watching in the park, which I thought was a fantastic scene where they go and watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Mm-hmm. The right. people won't accept me for who I am, so I have to rebel. But when people find out who we really are, they will accept me. And that's kind of the conclusion they come to in this of no one will like us if they find out who we really are, but actually they did anyway. And they didn't have to put on this whole act the entire time. So the April, mm-hmm. the high schoolness of it all was was totally dead on for, I think, what Seth Rogen was going for, which was like a super bad style Ninja Turtle movie. This felt like the South Park characters mm, or something, yep. you know, the four boys, it felt really had that Goonies energy to it. And I don't know if mm. I had felt that with Ninja Turtles or considered like, oh, that, that should be the vibe. And it is, once yeah. they did that, I was like, oh yeah, that's it. That's, that's the one. Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a good point. The animation on this is so great. I, I loved, we talked about this a little bit with Spider-Verse and then, on the news episode we did in July, because we talked a bit a, a bit about uh, Elemental, which has actually turned out to be pretty good for Disney. I think sneaky, it crossed yeah, sneaky recently, and oh, yeah, wow. it's 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 yeah. had good staying power and um and it's done pretty well. But the point that I I, I daycare is like it was crazy. never number yeah, one, totally, but it was always one. number just that five like yeah. every weekend, right? <laughs> it's like. Well, yep. they're just re- there wasn't a contender between early June kids, and yeah. and this Young for kids. for that kind of kids movie. You have that that Ruby Gilman, which was just DOA, and um, but there wasn't there wasn't anything else that it was um, going to draw. You're exactly right, Richard. Like it's I'm sure that there were daycares all across the country that are taking their you know it's movie day and taking the kids to to see that and stuff. I mean that was like half of my jobs in college and, and whatnot. Um, it's been a big hit. But this was another example to me of how far behind now Disney, Pixar, just the animation style of things are at this point. Because when you have Spider-Verse and Puss in Boots and and then this movie, and there's others that, are, that fall into this category too, that are just doing... It's not just that it's like advanced <laughs> animation, you know? It's just different. It looks a little bit different than what, and everything in the Pixar in the Pixar universe basically looks the same and looks like it is it is contained within its own universe and whatnot. Um, and then you see this, and like I, I think you guys, Ariel and and Kent, you both said it. It's like it's really cool to see the contrast. I thought between the turtles and the rest of the characters and the the clean design of of the turtles for the most part versus some of these other characters that are kind of off center and, and, yeah. and janky and yeah. And grotesque. And, and that's a great, that's a great word for this. Uh, I thought that was a really cool choice and, and made, this was very appealing to the eye and without being eye over. And also giving the turtles like a distinct um, look too. Like really each impressive. of them had their own shape sure. and distinct personality mm-hmm. yeah. look th- that match their personality. Whereas even in the nineties ones, they all right. looked the same right. except they had different colors. That was it. <laughs> different armbands. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Arby, you're a bit, you, you've always been a big Rogan Goldberg guy. Um, what did we think about the script for this thing? Um, I was not shocked. There was like seven writers on this when it was okay. over. It felt like a script to a story a little bit. I mean, it's an animated movie. So the, that's normally the case. It's very rare that these come from a, like single uh, auteur, auteur mm-hmm. making uh, animations normally kind of more of a corporate, not in a bad way, like that, you know, the Pixar thing where a bunch of people in a room toss out ideas and talk and write it together communally. Um, so, yeah, it kind of had a little bit of that feel to it. Um, but yeah, I think it, it certainly had, you know, it's so funny that Rogan is uh, is really good at, at crafting in um story and crafting in really distinct characters from each other 
Um, it's it's a very kind of veteran written movie, and I, and I mean that as a compliment. It doesn't feel mm-hmm. like some young upstart writes his turtle movie. It felt like people that really know what they're doing. It's going to be an mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, it's going to be yeah. an interesting adapted, you know, screenplay Oscar race between this Barbie and Oppenheimer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. Best, best picture meet mayhem. Yeah. No. Yeah. Best adapted I, screenplay. I think. I mean, Goldberg and Rogan have so much going on. I think they probably did just do the story and then hand this off to some screenwriters to to do. Sure. I think they steered this thing in the right direction. And yeah, I mean, it felt inspired by that, especially the casting of everyone, but the turtles felt like the, the Rogan all stars with Paul Rudd and Rose Byrne, mm-hmm. uh, even ice cube, uh, felt like yeah. natural. What'd you guys think of Jackie Chan? Isn't that interesting that when he did rush hour, which we just talked about, he could barely speak English enough to even do the movie. And now he's doing English voiceover roles pretty awesome yeah chan's awesome yeah i'm I'm gonna let you go on this one ariel for give me 10 seconds i am so here for the chan assance i i'm so here for it that i watched this awful movie that you just did with (laughs) with john uh uh, and 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 enjoyed him in it i mean the rest of it was crap but but uh, which movie Chan was fun it He's in a movie on Netflix, like with with John Cena, uh, Hidden Strike. I oh think. man! I, I like literally my review on Letterbox was in six years somebody's gonna be like, "Hey, you remember that time Jackie Chan did, did a movie with John Cena?" Cena and you're like, "No, he did oh he did, yeah, uh, I do remember that." I mean, it's so yeah, that's true. I forgot about that too. But uh, yeah, it's it's I I'm really. I'm really happy to see Jackie Chan get in. He's he's really good in this. He's I think his character and it's your yours, Ariel, to go for as long as you want. Uh I think his character might be the best written character of of this bunch. I don't think that, that this is like a great script or story or whatever. I think it's missing in story elements a little bit to where something like Amazing Spider Man every freaking time Spider Verse um does really well i think is is story side of things better than this does but i i felt like splinter was a very well developed fleshed out character right off the bat and that's that was awesome so ariel uh you're you're the the floor is yours my friend for for i mean you know yeah i I love jackie um i I recently saw these like posts like yeah who's the greatest stunt actor of all time is it tom cruise or is it keanu and like (laughs) tom cruise is is great right but like yeah it's Jackie Chan. Like the, the mm. dude is insane. Um, but like, you know, a lot of people don't realize this. He's like, he's not a martial artist. He, he's a comedian. He learned Kung Fu in mm-hmm. opera school. And so like, I love these moments where, you know, I think he was, I, I think as Splinter, like he was, he was very funny. Like he was very funny. And they incorporate obviously they incorporated in, in, in that one scene, that one fight scene, his like very physical comedy, which I think obviously is Jackie Chan's greatest strength. But you know, the, the there's a reason why his most famous movies are his are like the, the comedies. He's not Jet Lee, he's not Bruce Lee, he's he's always been the clown. And I think like the more he gets to be his goofy, fun loving self, like the usually the better the movie is. Yeah, I can, I can go forever on Jackie, Definitely. so I'm just gonna leave it. There. I loved his the the milking yeah. bit that they kept bringing back was super funny. Yes. The thing about Chris Pine yeah. was so good. Yes. I mean, the gosh, Chris's was funny. He had some yeah. Yeah. great delivery. The the don't you don't you use that word in this house? The the ratting him out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah, that was really that was a very. I thought that was maybe the best part again of of. Uh, of the character design on these. It was, it was great. He was great. Brought a lot of heart to, to this, the scene. I think it was like a good, I know animation is different than when you're actually, you know, on a set or whatever with the people that you're acting with. But I, I, it, it was kind of grounding to have these four newcomers, very young performers balanced off of the, off of that with, with Jackie Chan, this very seasoned, um, veteran actor and it just has a lot of poise even as a voice actor and uh, I thought it was great I, th- I love love that combination um, Kent I know you want to talk about the needle yeah. drops yeah. Love it. loved the, the soundtrack it. first of all the score was from Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross Richard fantastic <laughs> uh-huh. oh my gosh 
my God. I can't believe they let him name the reading. songs what they well, did. If you go look on the soundtrack, yeah. <laughs> they got some some curse words in the in the names of the song. So I think it's just like, yeah, whatever, Trent. As long as you do the <laughs> as long as you do the music, do whatever else you want. We don't care. I thought it was uh, set the vibe great, especially for a New York style movie, which I don't think he's really done before. If uh, mm. you, you really felt it, the Annie Up needle drop was great but the one that I was like man it's gave me a new appreciation for this song I've always liked the song but the way they used it the sequence mm -hmm. no diggity was so good the scene I've, the I've been uh, it for maybe the days, scene of the just year walking around the house with yeah. them fighting yeah. and, and yeah. kind of first coming into their powers and then the way it cut back to April on uh, baby you're perfect and it was so perfect Mm -hmm. It felt like a music video or something, and I love that. And then to close it out with yeah. "Can I Kick It" is always great. I mean, always a good yeah. needle drop. And yeah. it's become overused, but I it's love. Good. Yeah, I love that a tribe called Quest is getting some play recently. I think this has got to. We got to have a break on <laughs> on "Can I Kick It" for a couple of years. We there's yeah. a, they got a lot of great songs in the in the repertoire. Let's let's. Uh, Let's pull some other ones out because that song rules. That's one of my Brian's probably... blurb was "Can I kick it?" No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the Rotten yeah. Tomatoes. I mean, that might be one of my like I don't twenty or thirty favorite songs ever. I love that song, but we has been seriously overdone um, over the last few years. Which again, I'm glad that it's getting some play, but there's other songs in in <laughs> in their discography to go to. No diggity was perfect that was a perfect selection in and in, in that scene i saw that that's apparently a really hard song to get for movies or tv or whatever mm. just to get the licensing for because apparently one of the writers is estranged from the rest of the group and so they were kind of running up against it like they shot it obviously they yeah, made edited scene. the whole scene to the song um, that would be and they, so tough to replace. <laughs> yeah, so they that that's that's what Jeff Rose said. He's like, we 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 basically cut in a bunch of different songs to try out because we knew mm, it may this may not happen. Clarence came through at the last. I saw too. Uh, this was in a I think a slash film article, but that I forgot because they're not movies that I really love all that much. But uh, No Diggity is in Pitch Perfect. Or I think Pitch the Perfect first one too, yeah. mm -hmm. as well. Okay, and that was like. In the middle of filming the scene, they got Clarence to do it. Like they were just like, "Okay, let's go ahead and and film this thing because we we really so are hoping weird, this is going to come because through." Because they can make me make them so much more money. Yeah. If the, I I know it's always a thing. It's so but. it's so rare to to turn down an opportunity like that when you're a band like Blackstreet who hasn't been doing anything. Right. Like why? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like I know, I know. When I saw the headline of why it's so, I, I assumed it was Dre. I assumed it was a Dr. Dre thing, but it's not. Yeah. It's, it's one of the members of of the band is is estranged. But uh, so yeah, that good. was awesome, man. It was a like I said, I've been I've been singing that around the house for the yeah, last like five days. The, sure, the way uh, that scene is shot, everybody in my house is tired um, of it. The way that scene is shot is reminiscent of the, the arcade side -scrolling. games. The side -scrolling, side -scrolling, yeah. yeah, it's so. So clever, mm -hmm. such a brilliantly shot and edited scene with that music, yeah. And with the yeah, with the really rooftops cool. and everything, uh, I mean, gosh, it was it was so good. And the way it all comes together in the story, like that, with April doing her thing and them doing theirs, I mean, not the most obvious choice for a song, but that's what great needle drops are mm -hmm. ones that aren't the obvious choice, yeah. yes. I and mean, Guardians is full of those, and it just hit them and they mm -hmm. hit the tone perfect. Yeah. I love the crayon animation sequence too in this where they're the flashback mm -hmm. crayons yeah, cool. I thought that was great and Ice Cube's line where he's, where he's like ooze ooh I love that I like that that was so funny to me I don't know why I laughed <laughs> when he gets real angry that he didn't come up with the word ooze for the for the <laughs> substance it was funny and then their yeah. layer being a cosmic bowling alley looked so good in the animation with all the neon yeah with the darkness oh man it was it's very well it was very well thought out. I appreciated that. Yeah. That was good. Um a couple last things yep. here and you may have some other stuff nope. you want to get to, Kent. Ariel, what do we think of holding Shredder for the sequel? Shredder is obviously like the guy, the villain for that you the think Dark of. The Dark Knight move. Yeah. Um when you think of the turtles, 
and uh no he, he gets the he gets the kind of the joker card thing um at the end of this rather than being the, i i thought that was a I thought that was a little bit bold to go superfly um instead of shredder or even instead of like uh krang i guess um what where, where'd you fall on this is that good move bad move or hey it worked out so it's good you know what i mean like i, I i'm I guess there's a world where this makes $12 million and it's like, well, cool, but we're never going to make that sequel. So it doesn't matter. Um, but how, what did you think about holding? What do you think about super, super fly? And then what do you think about holding? Uh, I, the I, I think till the next one, I think holding shredder out is, is a good idea. And uh, th- there's two reasons. One okay. um, fans like myself uh, and people who like love the turtles, like anytime there's a turtles versus shredder, like thing you always go back to the 1990 version when they're fighting on the rooftop which is mm. just like it's mm. awesome um and it that came out 20 30, oh my god 30 years ago holy yeah, cow 33 anyway yeah. 33 33 years ago um but two you always run into the um the iron man one problem with superhero and comic book stuff where uh the origin of the heroes is always the origin of the villain uh to save time right mm. and when sure, you sure. do the shredder it forces you in <laughs> the shredder. by the way that the, the, the vanilla ice drop I, I had some fun with there also um ninja rap you know represent mm-hmm. uh yeah 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 and so by not doing the shredder my, my second point is it allows you to move away from the weird ninjutsu angle with splinter and them and and like and so i i i do love i do love that they use the mutants because i i do think the mutants are the most underrepresented or um most poorly used aspects of the turtles in in these kind of big like movies like sure bebop and rocksteady were in that 2016 movie but like nobody watched it and nobody likes it really ninja turtles (laughs) <laughs> the secret of the ooze or whatever that came out. I don't remember what year, you know, mm-hmm. like they had, I think it's Toka and Reza, but like, I don't know. These movies were so cool. You saw a bunch of them that you never, ever see in, in, in TMNT um, movies like Leatherhead. Um, and there's still more who you haven't seen. So like, it's, I think it's going to be, I think it was a great yeah. idea. Um, obviously it's, it's very reminiscent of Batman begins with the Joker card at the very end and of course you know um i do expect you know like oscar noms for the sequel just like just like the dark knight got so uh but yeah um oh. I, uh, I i thought it was like i thought it was a good idea big simmer score okay yeah all right kent where do we go from here obviously we expect shredder's going to be involved in the next one it was a very batman begins way of of uh teasing that which i i dug i think this was a movie that. I let me, let me rephrase that. I think this is a movie where you can you can make a good case that the sequel is going to do better. Um, I think you're right that there's there's a little bit of they're redoing that again. Um, I think it'll have really good word of mouth. It's getting really great reviews. All these sorts of things. So I think this is one that even if even if Paramount is is a little disappointed in where the 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 opening weekend ended up, and maybe they're not. I don't know. It's going to be profitable. Um, and I think you can make a pretty good case that that the sequel is a good idea, not just a uh, not throwing away, not throwing good money after bad or bad money after good. Excuse me. Um, where does this thing? Where do you want to see this go from here? Happens you got to think that they had a plan with Shredder, uh, or, or what do you use them in this mm-hmm. one? Right? <laughs> if, if, if Paramount's like, all right, well, right. Right. You get one shot, and you don't get a sequel unless it's a huge success. They would have just put Shredder in this one, which I think what is why they did it in the first one, uh, the Michael Bay first one. Mm-hmm. And it actually ended up making some money, and they're like, crap, what do we do now? And then they had right, the right. Brad Garrett thing and ended up cramming it, the second one, with villains because they didn't really have the Shredder card like to play like they wanted. So I think it's smart to hold it back, but I think they only, you only do that if you know there's something else coming whether it's a series, I've heard there's a series that's going to be based on this, maybe or something. And it is, I know I know there's more plans in addition to this movie uh, at the outset. And so when you have that commitment, I just wonder what they got up their sleeves. They've probably got some. They had Jackie Chan mm-hmm. for for Splinter. I mean, who do you get for Shredder? You know, uh, it's going to have to be 
you know, somebody with a lot of gravitas and some a lot of cachet in this world. So Arnold, that would be good. I don't know. <laughs> you weird. Ooh. I'm just kidding. About Interesting. That. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Richard was saying he was hoping it was Mel Gibson, but I, was, I mean, just bring Stephen, bring back Stephen and Mel. Drunk Mel Gibson. I was clear. I was said drunk Mel Gibson. Did not want him sober. He's Richard boring sober. Richard's. I like Mel. I like Mel firing off those. He immediately tapes. texted us when Spacey got off. It was like you Ninja Turtle sequel guy. <laughs> Does make a good villain. I'll give him that. Yeah. I saw how funny movie was Paul Space Rudd Rose. as the gecko. It Great. was just like Paul the forgetting awesome. Sarah Marshall yeah. surfer bro bit yeah that yes he did. yeah yeah and post malone as the <laughs> he only sang like two times was was good rose Byrne yeah. having like two lines of good bit. like hello or good day mate or something mm-hmm. as leatherhead right right it's not just shredder there's crane yeah. there's like metalhead still you know there's there's some Bebop. interesting stuff yeah i mean obviously casey jones is lingering out there too that's not really a villain but they'll bring They'll bring him. Even the mouth free point. for work. I'm um, telling you. <laughs> and the My Rudolph yeah. villain of um, it feels like it's going to be a thing too. Sure. Like the overarching yeah for villain sure. of I'm trying to take over the world and get the ooze to take over the world is still yeah. apparent in this. So oh yeah, so she right. she's an Utrom. Yeah. She's she's like Krang. You gotta okay. go Techno Drum right. with the sequel, sense. right? All right. I no, I think cool. they do. I think they do Shredder Foot Clan then Techno Drum. And tre- Technodrome for the third one. For the third, Technodrome yeah. is basically like the big Death Star of Ninja Turtles. Yeah, and so uh, it's like right. the big, okay. the big uh, villain base layer type thing. So yeah, it'd mm-hmm. be cool to see that their take on that in animation. But uh, yeah, maybe you save that for mm-hmm. the third one. You give a little, give us a little bit of Shredder in the second one, and then save Krang right. slash Technodrome for the for the last one. That's what I would do. That's good. Uh, I think Krang is going to be hilarious yeah. in this though. I mean, you know, I I actually thought Rogan was like a little too old to understand turtles, but when he was talking about it, he said, "I was five when the animated series debuted, and I yeah. was eight when the first movie came out." It's like, wow, you were in prime age for the original run of this. <laughs> so I always thought he was just, mm-hmm. you know, since he's older, uh, way older than me, like way out older than turtles. But I was like, wow, I, I must have been young when I was into it and he was I guess like Coop's age when when it was really hitting uh, Brian mm-hmm. so yeah I, I guess he they yeah. really understood yeah. this and you were right Richard in the fact that it's not just like let's go sell action figures like they actually care about this franchise and wanted it to be good and put a lot of thought into mm-hmm. this and it's more than what I can a, say for Michael Bay productions on, what a on almost anything <laughs> yeah what a concept <laughs> it's good yes good that's all i got all right uh let's grade this thing uh i i enjoyed it quite a bit i thought the animation was awesome i'm pumped for a return of the turtles into the pop culture my kid loved this um it was a really good time i did think it like i said it was missing a little bit on the story element as compared to some of the other like really good animated movies we've seen over the years but i'm pumped for where this is going to going to go over the next few years so i'm going to give this a strong a minus uh richard going to you first i will go solid down the middle b okay i'm going to go a on it because i do think that this could be pushed further and could be better you know i think i think even though this is like probably the best turtles movie in terms of like a good movie uh i still Mm -hmm. think like Mm -hmm. you can make it a fantastic great movie with this so i'm gonna go a in the hopes that the sequel is an a plus it's good yeah I, Ariel, I'll, i'm gonna go a i do think like ken said like you said uh definitely room for improvement like there's there's a world that exists great where origin this, yeah 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 there, but there's like oh, there's a world that exists where this is as good as like the spider-verse movies right that, that's sure seeing what you can do with this now is that's not outside the realm of possibility um but i i do think it's almost as good as they possibly could have made this first one so i think it definitely gets that kind of a kind of curve to the grade sure go see this i i think that this is a movie that uh, like i said i think the sequel does better than the than this one does yeah um but people you know we're about to be in a stretch where there's like nothing to watch for like a month and a half two months so 
um, go see this movie. I think it's uh, I think it's good. This it, this isn't. I don't know. I'll probably look stupid by next week. It is also a movie that you could reasonably see like smaller drops per week and kind of sticks around for a little bit um, as as people say, "Hey, did you see the Turtles movie?" and their friends are like, "Yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it a lot." You know, um, we'll see. It also could fade fast because summer's over or just about, and um, some of the audience is going to be. You know, back in school and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, this. Um, before we get out of here, let's do a uh, let's do a quick weekly. Weekly recommend. Richard, start us off, my friend. I will do. You know, I've I've semi retired from TV over the last few years, but one of the few shows that I religiously watch is back for season three. Only murders in the building mm-hmm. is back. Episodes dropping on the Hulu. Um, and so yeah. Holy Murders in the Building. It's nice. fantastic. And if you're not watching it, I recommend watching it firmly. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> I recommend very firmly that you watch there it. We that go. Sounds they like took a show that it. had basically yeah. 98% critic approval rating and they added Meryl Streep to it. So I think it's going to have like 195% <laughs> right. Right. approval rating. <laughs> and if my wife, was, she was a fan of the show, but if she wasn't that much in, they also added... Paul Rudd and right, Jesse no. Williams. So, yeah, they like did have Paul Rudd right, at the end of right in her wheelhouse season, too. So. so nice. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Awesome. I'm excited to uh, to revisit. Uh, that's a that's dips for a dinner, show. guys. Dips. Is this the last season of it? <laughs> so good. I don't, I don't think, think so. they've said. I don't think they've committed anything in either yeah. direction. Yeah, I think that's one that they everyone involved really likes making because yeah. you're in New York. They probably just have the same set every season, you know, uh, the apartment building. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah. So I think that's one that may go on a couple more because I don't think anyone that's doing it is hating doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I mean, obviously, obviously Martin and Short uh, get along quite well and have for very ever. It it, for very ever. That's not a word uh, for very long time. Firmly. Um, Firmly, very ever. Um, mm-hmm. They also seem to really love Selena, and she loves her. Yeah. I think they just really seem to dig really working Aren't, together. So it's good. The coolest thing ever is that my podcast idea is Martin Short said that after every day of filming, he and Steve Martin share a car to the apartment <laughs> building they stay at, and they have a bottle of white wine in the back seat and just sort of talk about the day. And I'm like, that uh, yeah, there we go. Podcast. That's that's the one. Uh, that's we don't need another podcast, but <laughs> we should get rid of ten thousand of them, right. including yeah, ours, and have that one. We would, we would gladly sacrifice uh, to to make that happen. Um, Kent, weekly recommend from you? Yeah, I'm going to recommend a classic TV show that I've been I've had kind of had in the background, revisiting a few episodes here and there, and love it. And there's a chance that some of our listeners have not ever given it a chance. It's the X Files. Oh, oh yeah greatness and uh one episode we we'll watched recently that hit home was season one episode fallen angel it was about uh, uh Duchovny or dermot mulroney or whoever it is mm-hmm. there's no way to definitively <laughs> no way know. To know yeah <laughs> i think that's dylan McDermott, you're right actually. life's great mr dylan mcdermott stumbles upon like a ufo crash and it's basically this like government cover up uh you know he stumbles upon like a recovery operation if you will so if you know if you're following the news yeah. that's what people are saying oh there are real recovery operations so it's basically uh, an episode about what's going on <laughs> kind of right now and it's pretty interesting so fallen angel is uh the episode but it's a series i mean nice. gosh a total zeitgeist show i mean one of the best shows ever for drama especially science fiction may be the best show besides like star trek ever uh love mm. the show and give it a shot 11 seasons the last two are awesome. only like 10 episodes and they're more recent but yeah yeah give it a shot some prime 90s network tv drama for you yeah it's it's a big undertaking but it's being it's being rebooted with Dog, is, it, is it is it Coogler? I feel like hmm. there's something happening where they're gonna reboot this thing, um, and it sounds awesome. So like if that that news came out like maybe three or five months yeah, ago, yeah, it is Coogler. So if you're interested, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds awesome. Um, if you're interested in knowing and like kind of like what's the vibe here, how does this work and, or kind of seeing some of it, but the 11 seasons is too much, which I get. Cause it's, it's like old network TV, 11 seasons too. You know, it's like 22 episodes a season for most of it. Um, cause I know wiser is doing this. It, like there's, if you just Google out, cause I don't have a link to it, but you can find a list of the important episodes yeah. and just kind of scroll through. Cause there is a lot of filler and I, th- I'm pretty sure you can even kind of pick and choose. Are you interested in the Monster of the Week episodes, which were always the ones that yeah. I liked the most? And there was more um, arc ones, yeah. Or are you more interested? Yeah, or are you more interested in the overarching story with the alien? Honestly, season and ten like and the um, Smoking Man and all that. Kind season ten is kind of like a mini series. It's got a lot of Roswell stuff. You know, yeah. it's it obviously doesn't have that '90s yeah. charm, but because it's made recently, but it's the For great sure. intro yeah. to the show in six episodes, and yeah, it's a. Uh, Man, I didn't know they were rebooting it. That's X Files is great, man. I it, always thought yeah, this this would work is, or could really work cool. better as a movie series than it ever did. You know, mm-hmm. it had movies, but like imagine a David Fincher yeah. X Files, you know, or something like a real. Mm-hmm. We're going, you know, deep levels of the government conspiracy stuff would be. Ladier, Ladier. I mean, he's got my vote. <laughs> yeah, X Files rules. It's a that's one of the major. The predecessors to the peak mm-hmm. TV bit well, that we got in the 2000s. It's that's a that there's a like a direct line from you know Hill Street Blue, Hill Street Blues, NYPD Blue, X Files, and a couple of other shows leads directly to Mad. It basically Man, made Bad Fox and this Sopranos and the Simpsons are what kind of made Fox yes. a success. Or, or, exactly. Yeah. Guys, guys, hear me yeah. out, right? Yeah. Louis Lettier. Yep. Fast X Files. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Now we All right. All right. Stop them. talking. Let's yeah. uh, let's get our lawyers on the line. And we'll we get got to go to Area Fifty One. Uh, <laughs> just see him peeling across the, truth the desert is out there and its family. <laughs> All right, I'm all in. The family is out yeah, there. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, stop talking. Stop talking. Don't give it away. Um, all right, Ariel, what's your weekly um, recommend? I do, I do have one planned, but you, you mentioned Coop not knowing Superman. I got to tell you to go check out My Adventure Superman. Um, oh, yeah, but that's true. Yeah. My recommend. Is that for kids, though? Uh, yeah, I thought it was yeah. more like adult, like about? swim type animation. It is, it is adult swim, but nothing in it is adult you know okay, what i mean got it. yeah uh okay you know his roommates with jimmy things get you know experimenting a couple times <laughs> um no my but uh, others can that, you're good <laughs> yeah yeah i mean he's they're they're, they're it, best it friends and their roommates more ways you know than one saying? um anyway uh <laughs> the time has come for my immense immense geekdom to come out on the show august 31st um well, well, what oh, was you the last nothing, believe me. The, my my love for this franchise that I'm about to talk about dwarfs my love for superheroes oh, wow. and Ninja Turtles and Godzilla and Kaiju and all that oh, stuff. Oh, I thought you were gonna talk about Pacific Rim. No. Go ahead. No. August thirty first on Netflix, the live action One Piece show comes out. Okay. And nice. Yeah. One I'm Live action anime almost never works. This kind of looks fun, and it could be fun. We could get two seasons, and then we'll never see it again. Um, watch the trailer if it interests you. I encourage you to watch it. But like the anime slash comic book manga of One Piece is gonna go down as one of the greatest pieces of love like literature ever, and um, mm-hmm. it is currently the third highest selling series of all time, only behind, no, it's, I think it's second now, only behind the original run of Superman, which is con- currently going on. So best selling. Mm. Um, he's top, the author's top 10 in sales of, of all books, above names like J.K. Rowling and uh, only behind names like Agatha Christie. You know, like, mm-hmm. um, but it is... I, I truly it's 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 incredible it's great um definitely try out the live action series when it comes out on august 31st uh if you're a fan look me up in the 
MAM VIP Discord. Um, you know, I just, I, it's, it's, if you, if you were to look up several book two people who like started it during the pandemic, cause it's like, oh, we can't go anywhere. What's something that I could read that's a thousand chapters long? Oh, it's one piece. They'll tell you it's, it's mm-hmm. incredible and they're hooked and they love it. And it's got a bad rap because anime has got a bad rap. It's got a bad rap because it's too cartoony. Um, as somebody who loves literature, who loves fantasy, who loves anime, who loves and who can understand what good art is and what bad art is, it's it's truly one of the best pieces of literature like ever made. Uh, mm. So that's my soapbox. I haven't been on the pod in a while. I probably won't be on until this sequel to TMNT <laughs> comes out or the people demand a One Piece episode from the live action Netflix. But there it I'm is. I'm surprised you're excited for it because um, – I always hear that it's not good to adapt anime and manga into live action. It never, never works. You think it's going to work? I mean, um, what I think is one, uh, he actually made them reshoot stuff like a little bit. Um, So everything kind of has to go through his okay. The the, the main authors whose last name is Oda Mm -hmm. ODA Uh, Two, the cast is incredible. Like, they cat like in the same way that like I don't know like the kids who who played the turtles like feel so authentic to who who, who those turtles are like the cast really feels authentic to the characters and uh, they and then like uh, um, if all else fails it's gonna look really cool because they actually like built the ships and built the sets uh, for the show it it looks better than nice. every other anime live action thing they've made at Netflix which is the lowest of bars um but it could be terrible and i'm gonna watch it and i might not like it but uh, nothing's gonna you know make me not like the source material so uh, nice yeah yeah i hope it's good for you because as long as i've i've known you you've you've talked about one piece so um i hope this i hope this goes i've always been more of a two-piece guy myself yeah (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, we we know we've we've seen your Instagram. Um, all right, uh, for me weekly recommend. I try not to uh, double up recommends. I don't I don't want to recommend something that one of you guys has wrecked in the past. Uh, try to try to mix it up a little bit. But I finally finished uh, the Bear season two, and it's the yeah. it's the best season of TV I've seen this year. So that's that's my recommend. I I love season one. And season two season just like blew it out of the yet? water. The so uh, one hundred ninety one. Uh, it was so so good. One hundred ninety one seasons. No, uh, no, that's one piece. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, the bear's awesome. Uh, but yeah, check check out the bear on Hulu. That was yeah, that was uh, it's t- man, that Christmas episode was tense and but so good. I think I think Mulaney may have won a. The guest Emmy uh, there with his little monologue was great. Odenkirk was running? great. Um, I love Cousin Richie so much. And uh, and then they just, they were like, hey, what if what if every needle drop was just like the most dad rock song ever? I'm like, heck yeah, bro. Like, let's do this. So lots of Pearl Jam, lots of Wilco, lots of R.E.M. Uh, it was great time. So uh, that's, that's uh, by far the best season of TV I've seen this year. So check that out on on Hulu if you haven't yet. Um, all right. This has been fun. Good conversation. Good talking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem with you fellas. Thanks for being here, Ariel. Really appreciate you adding some uh, some insight to this whole thing. We're, we're always happy to have you back. You don't have to wait for the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Pacific Rim movie or whatever else. So um, I'm very close to showing Coop Pack Rim, though, by the way. I'll let you know. I'll let you know how it goes. Last week, Coop randomly was like, I want to watch a Godzilla movie. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And mm-hmm. we watched the Godzilla from 2014 or whatever that was. And he was like, it ended. And he just looked at me and was like, he, <laughs> he held his hand up and did like the circle motion. Like, all right. Oh, that way one, that one ends on the cliff. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's King like, I need Monster. another one right yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Watch King of the Monsters. I left for a meeting during uh, King of the Monsters. I came back home and he was like, "I watched, <laughs> I watched Kong vs. Godzilla while you were gone." I'm like, okay, all right. So you're all in, and the next day is like Skull Island. Fun, Let's man. do it. So, 
Uh, Pac Rim's coming. I know he's gonna he'll enjoy that stuff too. So anyway, thanks for being here. I really appreciate you. Um, if you are not a VIP, you want to do that, right? Like, I mean, come on, get more of this, get more conversation, get access to our exclusive Discord, get I don't know hundreds of episodes in our back catalog, and get a new an extra episode every single week. This week, uh, we are talking about George Lucas's. American Graffiti, which is a really cool movie, and I'm interested to talk to you guys about that. We talked about Rush Hour last week. We're doing a disaster retrospective series in the VIP uh, this year. Uh, where we're talking about movies that were huge bombs at the box office, like Waterworld and The Postman. And this month in August, we'll be talking about one of the biggest, one of the biggest train wreck disaster movies of all time, Cutthroat Island. So I'm very excited about that in a couple of weeks. Go to madaboutmoviespodcast.com slash VIP. Sign up there um, and get more of Mad About Movies. And uh, and then next week we'll be back. And I think next week we're going to talk Meg 2, The Trench. Until then, stay safe. We'll see you at the cinema. Hey, baby, I hear the blues are calling. Toss salads and scrambled eggs. And maybe I seem a bit confused. Yeah, maybe, but I got you pegged. <laughs> but I don't know what to do with those tossed down and loose scrambled eggs. They're calling again. Scrambled eggs all over my face. They're making me ya ya. Your salad is scrambled eggs. They're calling again. 